people. All right, then. Let's do it. Welcome to another wonderful episode of Whiskey, Wine, and Moonshine with Lady Buddha, Sojo for Dad, and Miss Think Pretty Smart. Say hello, ladies. Lady Buddha, how are you tonight? I'm good. I'm, uh... <laughs> What's so funny? Just, just that I'm, like, completely, like, dead-ass sober and serious. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Got it up. I mean, you know, it happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all right. I might get ahead of you, so we might be okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm drinking wine tonight. Uh, what kind? I have, I'm trying out a new one, a new cab, because I think we're just going to kind of hang out with cabs for a while and try okay. some different ones. So this one is a, it's called Slingshot. Mm. It was rated a 97 on somebody's scale. Maybe it goes up to 100. I don't know. But, um, yeah, Slingshot Cab tastes pretty good. Tastes like most of the cabs taste. And, um, yeah, and I got some cherries. Oh. Cherries oh. are finally in season. Mm. Yeah. Now, and are they a million dollars a pound down there? No, or are no, they no. Mm. no, they're coming down. They're coming down. They're coming down a lot, actually. They're not sweet yet, but okay. they're getting there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, I am drinking on the finest of filtered waters, um, all that Britta has to offer. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's lovely. You have nothing tonight? Did you just see me eating a salad? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm trying to get my no. I I have to prepare my body because you guys. I think I'm I'm sure I mentioned to you. You know, I have this party coming in the next few weeks, so I've got to cleanse and then build up a tolerance. So I'm I'm at the cleansing point now, and then I'll be building in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> so yeah. So so Joe, what are you drinking since you're all up in my business in my cup? <laughs> I don't think she heard me. So Joe. I have, um, yeah, can you hear me? Yep, got you. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh -oh. Oh, okay, I was going to say I have sangria. Um, I actually was trying to buy the sangria to do that little smoothie thing again, but it fell out the back of my truck in my garage and spilled everywhere, so I had to hurry up and pour it out. So that's all I have is just straight sangria. So we'll see how it goes. Well, we also yeah. have in the chat room um, Leonard Brothers. He said, uh, with commenting on the song that we have as our trailer on our trailer, uh, Zap uh, Computer Love. He said, the crazy thing is they made this song at a time when we didn't have internet and technology like we do now. This joint was way ahead of his time. And then he followed up by saying, um, Lady Buddha, can you keep your ring out the sunlight, please? It almost <laughs> blinded him a second ago. <laughs> Yeah, this is not going to be clown lady boo tonight. <laughs> the look that you just had on your face reminded me of when we first got on Google Hangout and you were talking about being in love. You were like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you remember that? See, same <laughs> look. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, anyway. Jeffrey said, LB. I've been, I've tried, I've been trying to, to keep it out of the camera because I don't want people to think I'm flashing on purpose, but I realize I put my hand in my face a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> it feels funny because I'm holding my hand <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, I see what you did. You made her self-conscious. Right. <laughs> yeah, she does put her hand up a lot. I do. Um, and we also have Jeffrey who said, uh, hey, hey, ladies, looking pretty as always. Sorry I wasn't there for the show to celebrate you all. Your uh, first anniversary of podcasting, so I'm here to make up for missing the show last week. Hey, Jeffrey. Right. He was our first fan. He was our first fan. Um, <laughs> and as our first fan, I hope that he has taken advantage of our uh, audible, you know, uh, situation. Uh, audible situation. <laughs> audible situation. Because this is a great time to say that today's podcast is brought to you by audible.com. Get a free audio book download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash whiskey wine moon. Over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Woo woo! <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to put that out there. And um, oh, we have a little bit more. A little bit more business to take care of before we get into our main topic. And I'm sorry if I appear to be rushing. We have a 
finite amount of time to get this done. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to read a little bit of feedback that we got from Mobile Greek for well, Mobile Greek. It says damn good show, and this was on our was it on our cheer show, ladies? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, damn good show, ladies, and I'm going to start a drinking game on how many times Miss uh, what? <laughs> Miss Mark <laughs> drops a cuss <laughs> word. LOL. And you ladies spoke about online dating. It is great. I met my wife online dating. I would have never met her if it wasn't for the connection because your soulmate may not always be in your same zip code. Amen. Mm -hmm. Which brings us <laughs> to today's topic. I have to mm -hmm. sigh in saying it and have everybody get their minds and spirits ready to receive the information we're about to share. Oh, goodness. Hey, Black Rob, hey. Um... What's up with the meerkats and giraffes? Listen. Yeah. <laughs> he started. See, I wasn't even going to do it. I'm going to do it, but he, he said it. I'm going to do it. The ladies and gentlemen, as part of, uh, Sojo is heading up the <laughs> Lady Buddha slash Blue Nuptial Ceremony Planning Committee. That's right. And um, we over here, and by we, I mean uh, Black Rob and I, have oh, been supporting goodness. our efforts in trying to get the rental of the giraffes, the meerkats, and you know the praise, the praise mime dancers, and everybody get everything coordinated mm -hmm. um, for the spectacle that will either appear in Jet or on World Star Hip Hop. We're not sure yet. The giraffes have agreed to do to be the twerk team, right? So that's okay. We'll be twerking. Mm -hmm. Is their job at all? Blue got the meerkats tuxedo. Yeah, I mean, it. Oh, stop! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I might need to go down and make him have an appearance on camera to cut all this nonsense out. He would show out. So <laughs> anyway, let's quickly move on. Go oh, ahead, Mark. Okay, so many of you may be familiar with uh, insanity. Was it insanity check? Yeah. He's Insanity Report on Insanity. Twitter, but his show right. is Insanity Check. It's called Insanity Check. So the last three episodes, he has featured some, oh, dastardly online dating stories. Just <laughs> horrible people, horrible situations. And um, this is something that we all have discussed in our little WhatsApp group that we've already shared with you that it exists, whatever. And so we decided today to delve a little bit into the online... Um, dating situation <laughs> um, and I don't know where we will start I don't know who wants to say what uh, <laughs> I want to start though by saying that I feel like Will Packard and Rob Hardy shout out to Beta New fam you I feel like Rainforest Productions needs to take Insanity's stories and turn them into a movie because I feel like and I tweeted it to them I feel like Michael Ely should play the character of Insanity and like Kevin Hart should be like a combination of H2O Kev and Rod and just because the whole story that they told just seems like it could be some sort of movie so I just wanted to give that little plug out just in case they're listening and think like a man too is coming out um, but I felt like <laughs> when I was listening to the podcast that it could have been a movie so hmm. I haven't heard the third episode. You got to get us caught up on. I didn't hear that one either. Right. So yeah. basically, the third episode is the guy. I can't think of his name right now, but it's the guy who does their intro song, and he is the guest, and he tells a story about a, a woman he met on a plane, um, flying from L.A. to Baltimore, and basically the woman um, plotted their whole life out after a 20-minute conversation with him. Now keep in mind, if in, if you any of you have flown a long flight. That flight is about four or five hours. So mm -hmm. he only spoke to her for 20 minutes. But after that 20 minutes, and he went to sleep, uh, you know, <laughs> once they got off the plane, she tried to get him to pretend like they were engaged to his mother. Oh, what? Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. She tried to, like, kiss him in an in a inappropriate way in front of his mother. And this is after 20 minutes. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Ooh, wait. wait a minute. This was a random person that happened to be sitting near him on the plane. Right. And at first he tried to rebuff her, but as men do, as Rod always says, your dick is not your friend. And so he saw her ass. And then one thing led to another. Next thing he knew, he, she's trying to hook up with him in Baltimore. He avoids that. They go back to Cali. She lives a few hours away from him. And she's like, eventually calls him and is like, you know, I'm in your neighborhood, but she's two hours, she lives two hours away from him. It was just a stalker situation. Uh, in, <laughs> no, the in her mind, they were in a relationship. 
in her mind, they were in a relationship, and she was like a decade or two older than him. Like she was 41, and he was like in his late 20s. So, it, you know, that's what the third episode was really, that was the meat of it. Yeah, Jax was his name. Um, and it was just, the, the stories that these guys tell about these women, I don't know them. I don't know these women who are Bible beaters, who put that in their um, profile. However, I do know a woman who mm, go out on one date with her and you guys are dating, but you may not go out ever again and never see this woman again and, and she would re refer to you guys, you guys as dating but she she would nobody I know at least they wouldn't publicly acknowledge doing the things that Chris is talking about these women are doing but here's the thing I don't think that's an online thing though um, Demetria Lucas of Bell in Brooklyn she you know she does all these um, like advice Q and A's on her Ask.fm account, and somebody asked her um, to share her thoughts about like, can you meet someone of worth on? I think it was Twitter that she asked, and she said, yes, absolutely, you can, but can you build a relationship over that platform? No, she was like, online dating, you meet there, you date in the real world. So, right. online dating is a great place to meet, and when we say online, we don't necessarily mean like hookup sites. You can meet on a blog you can meet on <laughs> you can meet on Twitter you know or whatever but the dating part of it takes place in the real world and those batshit crazy tendencies that would happen if that girl had met you know whoever in the grocery store yep you know, she would be in a relationship with him by the time they finished leaving the produce aisle yep so, <laughs> <laughs> people always think you meet crazy people online but you meet just like Jax you meet crazy people on a plane. <laughs> so Yeah, I mean it's true. I mean I've dated online. Um I was like I spent a lot of time online like over the years. I think I was kind of an early adopter, you know, back when America Online used to like mail you the C D that you use to do dial up. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> wow. So back then you had <laughs> So back then, they the didn't youngest. Know. I don't know what y'all are talking about. Okay. Really, really? Okay. There was dial-up. <laughs> okay. There are people in the country that still have dial-up today. But at any rate, poor them. Um, <laughs> you know, but I used to, you know, chat rooms or whatever, cause, because being an introvert and you know, kind of. Uh, liking to spend time alone, being an only child, whatever. It was just something that was fun to do. Just met people and talked. And so I wasn't really there to date people, but I did meet someone that I eventually dated, What you know, went out a couple of times in the real world. And then so when I had the opportunity later on to try places like Match.com and eHarmony, I did try those places. And people at the time, because I did it, you know, we're talking 10 and 12 years ago is when I started doing some of that stuff. People weren't really doing it. It wasn't a mainstream thing to do. They didn't have commercials on TV that, that much and that kind of stuff. And so people would be like, well, I don't know about online dating and I don't know about this and that. And I would say the same thing. It's just like you're going to meet either you either you have access to a large number of people, which I didn't. You know, I work in a profession that's predominated by predominantly women period. Um, and the men who are there are generally married. Um, and sometimes their wives work there with them. <laughs> um, you know, I just wasn't going to meet guys in my, you know, the circles that I traveled in. So I said, well, I'll just go online. And you met cool people. I met a lot of really nice guys. And whether or not they ended up being long-term relationships didn't have any, anything to do with the fact that I met them online. As a matter of fact, I felt like I could get to know them better at first because of the types of communication that we could have, you know, kind of in a low pressure situation mm -hmm. um, back then. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was looking at the history of internet dating and the article that I found um, basically kind of, it, it showed me that there's really nothing new under the sun because it says something about um, internet, internet dating being the modern version of the first matrimonial agencies of the 1700s because mm -hmm. basically in the 1690s, 1700s, they used to find lonely, they used to, you know, help lonely bachelors find wives. So they would do printed ads back then. Yeah. So it's like, you know, why is it taboo now, <laughs> you know, for someone advertising as opposed to then when it really wasn't taboo back Mail then? Mail order brides. I mean, that's real. Yeah. I think, I think it's taboo now because people don't want to admit that leaving it in their own hands is not getting them any better results than doing it 
elsewhere. You know, like, so in, in previous generations, we've had arranged marriages and we've had all these things, and people, you know, in the last maybe 100 years or so, maybe even not that long, think, oh, if I take it into my hands, I'm going to make better decisions than my mother, auntie, cousin, whatever. But if I do, quote, unquote, online dating where the system is matching me up with these people, it means that I can't do it myself. Mm -hmm. and and quietly you know you you can't you know a lot of people don't make great decisions and that's not to say that people don't end up married but a lot of people mar end up married to the wrong people and or miserable because on a basic foundational level they don't have enough in common to, to, to sustain a long-term happy relationship on top of that I think that while you know there is some still some negative stigma about it the negative stigma is usually um, limited to dating sites and not necessarily social networks. Right. Um, and then on top of that, okay, so meeting on the social network is great because you have people in common, but from a basic financial perspective, doing online dating makes sense because um, there's an article, and I think I, I put the link, we'll put the link up on our site. Um, I put it in the chat for the ladies. I got you. I'm getting an article. Um, it says using data from a um, uh, staticbrain.com, um, they note the average courtship time for offline traditional dating ahead of marriage runs around 42 months or two years longer than the 18 and a half month dating, um, average dating to marriage cycle for people who meet online. At mm. a conservative estimate of one date per week and a cost of $130 per date, 104 meal and drinks at a nice restaurant plus 30 for two movie tickets and popcorn the dating phase prior to off prior to offline marriage runs up to twenty three thousand six hundred and sixty dollars. Okay, but the average dating site customer spends two thirty nine a year on online memberships, which um, which um, more than pays for itself to the tune of twelve thousand eight hundred and three in cost of savings for fewer dates. They continue assuming you go Dutch, like da da. But on top of that. The amount of money people spend going to clubs, going to church, because you got a tithe, getting your, your church outfit good, and all that kind of stuff, that they're, most people are doing that. I don't, a lot of people are doing that to no. meet someone. So they're still spending a ridiculous, what I think is a ridiculous amount of money when they could target uh, you know, their, mm -hmm. their spending in online dating and or social networking online. Well, target spending and target your time. Like, right, right. Because a lot of us are so busy, we don't have time for that. Like, we don't, we don't have time for that. And I was really, it was like interesting to, like, because uh, Chris was talking about, you know, I've never been on OK Cupid, so I don't really know how it works, but I'm assuming it works kind of like match. Um, that once you enter your information and answer whatever the questions are, you know, they're going to give you a percentage match with other people. And then if you like those people's profiles, whatever you, connect with them right and so you know you could change the search terms and so sometimes I'd be like well let me put the bar right here let me try the bar over there and let me try try different zip codes and let me try different you know salaries or different t job types and just just to try out different kinds of things to see who came up as matches or who looked interesting and so that that was interesting to do but it's also um, saves time ultimately um, because I can say mm, I'm going to screen that person out they're not going to make it past the first round or when they start writing these uh, responses that look like they don't you know haven't really mastered um, <laughs> <laughs> basic communication you know then I can just say oh, okay well you probably are a nice guy but mm, no thank you <laughs> so yeah yeah. I want to um, just say a shout out to um, Jen. She uh, has some apple pie moonshine that her boss gave yeah. her. <laughs> uh, hopefully she's uh, enjoying that right now. Uh, let's see if there's uh, anything. Uh, hey, Rare Fine. Hey, girl. Hey. She said, <laughs> online dating is a new chat line type of dating. Oh, my God. We, we were, were talking, talking about the chat line. About that right before we started the show. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is. She was ear hustling before we hit live. That's all what it was. the way. All the way. Um, let's see. Uh, she also 
Wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay. So LB said he agreed with uh, Sojo's point about how the internet opens you up to the opportunity to meet people all over the world. But if you're interested in dating, the work that goes into that happens offline. Yeah, it does. It does. My girlfriend, let me just tell you about her real quick, um, had a boyfriend and they broke up, blah, blah, blah. And so it was her first, and she's um, younger than me. And so she, that was her first time deciding to try to get online. She met a guy and she was very excited about him and they have been exchanging text messages. And uh, she was like, he's trying to ask me out. What should I say? And I was like, you should say, yeah. I said, do, do something simple, you know, like agree to coffee. Um, or something that it takes a really short period of time and if you want to schedule it in a time where if it's going well you can extend it to dinner or something later on that day that's fine but just make it a low pressure quick because then you can either find out whether you really are connecting with this live human being in person or whether it was just all bullshit texting him back and back and you don't you know start your life right now or stop wasting time right now either way <laughs> go go out and meet with him so she met with him and they hit it off instantly and they have been inseparable since oh so. that's good that's good yeah. because it could be a hit or miss too like you can, you can connect with somebody online and like their online presence and then get in front of them and the chemistry isn't there. So Ooh, I mean, but I you can't, stories too. <laughs> but you can't wait, you know, for that to happen. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it either happens or it doesn't. And eventually like the dating thing has to happen, so you can't spend all of your time online. Exactly. So what what do you guys think are and and I I, I asked this question because as Chris was reading some of the profile stuff, I was like, ooh, she lying, ooh, she crazy, ooh. This. There were all these little things that as a woman, I have spent enough time around other women in the hair salon to know what trigger word, you know, what the trigger lie words are. <laughs> so what do you guys think, um, for women and for men, are signs that the person on the other end is being less than um, honest? I don't, I don't know because I haven't. You mean on a dating site? Yeah, on the dating site, yeah. You mean are they trying to catfish you? Is that what you're trying to ask? Well, no, because saying, like for instance, you know, curvy. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. curvy. Mm, go ahead. No, if you, if they say curvy, you need to add some extra pounds to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else? Um I think with men and their salaries, you need to deduct about ten thousand dollars <laughs> from what they put, from what they put on there. Because I mean, you know, realistically, some of them are going to increase their salary so they can get a different pool of women, you know, who will want to date them. Well, some of them will decrease their salaries. Yeah, yeah some try of them. to see what you're kind of what you're going for. Some of them will, but you can tell by like the the verbal exchange. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like that whole, like you were just talking about, like mm -hmm. the ones who haven't necessarily mastered. I can't say about if I would recognize, um, you know, kind of the trigger words because I know I was honest when I was online, and the guys that I actually met in person were true to how they described themselves and they have recent pictures and that kind of stuff. So, you know, I don't know. I, I keep hearing all these horror stories about, well, that was 10 years and 20 pounds ago, you know, that kind of thing. But I, I didn't have those experiences. So I only had one date from an online site. Like I, I met a guy on Match and everything kind of worked out because he was from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So where'd you go to high school? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So as soon as I know where you go to high school and what year you graduated, you're either going to be who you say or not. And it was cool. I mean, it wasn't a connection connection, but it wasn't like a catfish, you know, type scenario. But I've only I've, I've only been comfortable. And that was the reason I felt comfortable was because I could background check, you know, not run a background check. But, you know. Yeah. See, if he really, you know, six degrees of separation. Right. I was like, really, what year did you graduate? Let me ask my cousin if he knows you, <laughs> you know. Well, but that was the thing. A lot of the, well, yeah, say a lot, like it was that many. But some of the guys that I met online, there were people that I knew who knew them. Like, we, I could trace them back to people who actually said, right. oh, in fact, one guy that I went out with a few times, my mom knew his parents. When I said his name, she was like, oh, 
his dad is such and such, and they went to school at such and such. I'm like, wait a minute, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he wasn't even an Atlanta native, uh, but she knew, you know, his parents from back in the day when she was in college. So mm -hmm. they tended to just be real people. So that's why I'm always like, just try it. You're going to find crazy people at the gas station or online. I don't know. Yeah, black black background check, when should you run a background check? Huh? Speaking of background checks, when should you run a background check? Well, for my own physical for my own physical safety, no matter where I meet anybody, I offender search them. Mm -hmm. yeah. The reason yeah. I do that is because um, I do offender search and Google their name, and I'll tell you a really brief story about why I do that. And I was I've been doing that since before it was cool to do because I dated a guy who um, had told a story of his transition from high school to college and the years didn't add up with when he pledged so it didn't make sense to me and he never explained that space and we dated we dated some things happened and I googled him and what I would find out was that he never he didn't use his first name but I knew his first name so that's what I ended up googling and mm. he had um, been accused of rape so that further that explains so much about him. Mm. And if I had known that within week one, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have even said cat dog smell. And he also knew and knows we, we know a lot of the same people, but they mm. didn't know that. Mm. I didn't I didn't go out and tell them that. As it would turn out, he had to stop dating black women because we would know, or black educated women, because we would know the math didn't add up with when he pledged and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. So yeah, yeah. I feel like now, well, especially I guess we're we're HBCU people and you know whatever. But I kind of feel like now there's always six degrees or less of separation for anybody, mm -hmm. you know. So it's it's relatively easy to find out. So and that's a that's a huge red flag when they don't have anybody, <laughs> you know. That, that was, was my girlfriend. Person. Yep, she was. She, yeah. she met this guy online. He said he lived here and worked uh, somewhere and did some things. And I actually, I, I think I may have even asked Ted about him because in my mind, if he had all these things in common with somebody like Ted, Ted would at least be able to ask a friend if they knew him. Right. And no right. one knew him. And none of my circle of immediate friends knew knew him. Outside I didn't know him. He had a unique name and I went back to her and I was like, yeah, he's lying. He doesn't exist. So I don't know what what you're going to do with that. But no, he's he's not for real. Um, oh, by the way, we have a couple more comments here. Mm -hmm. um, Jeffrey is saying that he can't date. He's too young to date and way too nervous to date. I don't know how old Jeffrey is. Um, Black Rob says <laughs> you gotta assume anybody, everybody is lying, on, <laughs> lying on dating sites, and when you meet them in public, a bar, a grocery store, said I don't necessarily assume that. Yeah, um, I do. If they have a Clinton Gore '96 <laughs> poster, now I'm sorry, <laughs> take tread lightly. Yes, that is that is certainly a sign that there. <laughs> However, I could probably do that with the Clinton Gore <laughs> picture because. I did once post a picture of me from like years ago versus like last year or whatever, and they're very much similar. But I wouldn't do that. Um, but I think, I think um, also heavily cropped pictures. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a, okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Those, those guys don't get a second look from me. If you got something like we see hands and arms and all, all right. kinds of people that's been cut out. I got, I'm like, dude, it's too, especially now, like 12 yeah. years ago, maybe it was a little, you know, you had to actually scan a hard copy of a picture and then like, <laughs> upload it. And, Cause I had, you know, I remember that was hard work. Okay. But right now, <laughs> but in the last couple of years, where everyone can, can take a picture with their phone, and you gotta crop folks out, you don't have time to like just take a picture, a selfie. Let's oh yeah, that's out. the other thing: Come blurry on. and out of focus pictures yeah. in yeah. 2014. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because last time I was on a match in eHarmony, I looked at somebody's picture. I'm like, come on, come on, seriously. Like, how old are you? You don't have a, a grasp of basic technology. You that know. makes me think you're in jail or you, or you recently right. got out of prison. You're a little slow. To a little slow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this just for the, the viewing and listening audience. I only recently found out that there is a, are situations. There are, okay, so there are websites that are dedicated to people who are uh, in jail. <laughs> and 
There are, and, and the, the ones that I've heard about are where they're um, male inmates and they're women who are online dating them. But did you guys know, and again, this is for the viewing and listening audience, that prisoners will have people do okay Cupid um, and Plenty of Fish <laughs> and all those for them, and they will have people write to the women, and then, like, once you know, the women are hooked, like, take yeah. it offline and say, oh, you know, I'm, unfortunately, I'm incarcerated, yada, 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 and people are going for it. This is what's happening in these streets, in these dating streets, people. I can tell, but can I tell you about my friend who is oh, currently incarcerated, who has a phone in prison and an active Facebook account, and he takes pictures. <laughs> 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 But he also is very popular with the ladies for his ladies, you know, statuses where he gives all the advice oh, about this woman. God, the madness. And I think he now has a girlfriend based on his active Facebook account. So, I mean, <laughs> there are ways to date. People, there are ways to date, even if you are in car. But that's not dating. That's not. That's, that's not, not dating. You know what? You're right. Meeting people. There's but some of these women connect. think that they're dating them. Like, they're faithful. So. And this is why when those women go and marry these guys, they're separated four months after the fact, pregnant, and then on Facebook pretending that they're still together. I won't say no names. Um, I was say, that sounded real specific. That sounded man. real pacific. <laughs> <laughs> money used to say pacific. Pacific. Oh. Yeah, and it happens all this because you don't know this person. And most of the time, if you are the type of person to uh, marry someone who is incarcerated, someone you didn't know ahead of time. Now, cause, because it is possible that you were in a solid relationship with right. this person ahead of time, yada, yada, yada. And, yeah. you know, conjugal visits. Well, actually, you don't have to get married to get, have conjugal visits. But anyway, um, but if, if that is your mindset, I don't... Wait, I don't, hold on, wait. Did you see Buddha's face? <laughs> what? No, I didn't. No. Nope. Go ahead. No, I, I don't. I don't think that some, that somebody who is specifically looking for a mate who is far, who is locked up, is probably going to make solid life decisions in other areas. So I don't know that that should be the person the guy in jail wants to marry, because like she already made a sketchy decision with you. So why would you want to legally link your link yourself to someone? Well, you know what? That's stupid. He made a bad decision too. I'm, I'm just gonna be quiet. Yeah, I was just about to say everybody. Yeah, let's, uh, let's yeah, we gotta check away from that. <laughs> I mean mm. it happens, it happens, it happens. We all oh. Mm, no, go ahead. I'm, I won't share that story. But anyway. uh, oh, uh, you said you had plenty of stories. We need right. We need we need uh, stories. Oh, uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> look at it. It's like, mm -mm, mm -mm. Well, people, and you know, you guys, I've told you a story about this all, already. But um, on the insanity um, report, the guy Jacks the rapper talked about how they saw somebody's wife on um, a dating site. That mm -hmm. happens all too often. And I think, I, I won't tell the story, but it happens all too often. I don't understand how you, like, I mean, how bold, like, I, <laughs> like if you're married. <laughs> or in a relationship, a committed relationship with someone. Especially if you initiated said committed relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're like chilling up there, posting up, trying to get some new uh, linkages. Online, mm -hmm. like online now. <laughs> Last time I logged in 15 minutes ago. Ooh, and that's the thing that Jack said. Is that he said it makes it easy to, you know, just pick another one. You know, if this one doesn't work out, you know that you can go online and, you know, quickly replace. You, you know, know, it seems like to me you would be more discreet and do something like, like I think, um, you know, like, um, what's what's the thing where you can do different activities? Meetup.com. Oh, yeah, meetup. And do activities if you were date, you know, if you were hunting for a date or something like that, as opposed to being as bold to be married or in a committed relationship or whatever on an active dating site. Like, that's but, just... But no, because Meetup will require you going out. Like, it's an easier, it, it's a, easier to fill your net when you're doing it online. You know, as to meet up, if you're there with eight people, then chances are you probably can only get two of those women. But if you're online and you hit eight women, 
then you probably could get six of them. You know, and that's interesting because now that you have Tinder where all you got to do is look at people's pictures and just get, like, I, I don't know how Tinder works, but they said you just, like, basically go from picture to picture and hit the ones you like. Like, mm -hmm. it seems like it's going to be even easier nowadays to do that. See, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what it is until I was listening to the Insanity Chat. Exactly. Like, they were talking about it's an app. I guess it's connected to Facebook. So somebody oh. can go through and look at, like, your profile photo. Correct me if I'm wrong, people in the chat. But basically, no. like, if you like the way that person looks, you put a little yes, that person sees that you like them. So you can put whether or not you like their profile photo, and then you can talk. Oh, so well, that's kind of like the way all those other places work. You so know. it's strictly based on how you look, like no profile thing, you know, to go through. Speaking of which, um, I, I remember when we were doing our bios for our site, and I put on the site, like, this was a, this was more stressful than, you know, filling out a Match.com profile, because mm -hmm. you never really know what to say about yourself when somebody's asking. Um, what in a profile, or what in a profile would completely, like, turn y'all off? You know, I'll tell you what turned me off because so many guys did it. It's this is my first time. I've never done anything like this, so here goes. <laughs> we don't care. It was everybody's first time. At one point, just answer the freaking questions. Right. <laughs> or the other one that really turned me off, especially on eHarmony, because this was a standard one, which was like, what are the last books that you read, or name three good books, or something about books. And when a Negro said, I don't read, or I don't like to read, or I can't remember the last time I read a book, I just went ahead and went to the next one, because what, what am I going to talk to you for? <laughs> well, I would say, I would say uh, a lot of poor grammar and oh, yeah. poor spelling, because you can copy and paste it into Word, and it'll help you. <laughs> you feel like if they didn't make the effort to do that, what else are they not going right. to do? <laughs> How lazy. That's pretty um, lazy. Are you? And I also, uh, backgrounds. What do you mean? What backgrounds. You mean? The backgrounds of people's pictures. I look at them on Twitter. I look at them everywhere. Because if you're sitting there and you're saying that you, you know, um, I don't know, like a certain standard of living, and I see over your shoulder oh, a yeah. <laughs> on the floor, or yeah. I see, yeah. I don't know, a woman's hair dryer on the bathroom counter, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the pictures get you discounted quickly, but the the lame profiles or the half done profiles or things that look like they didn't put forth any effort, I just don't I don't need to put forth any effort either because that's the whole reason you're here <laughs> is to let people know who you are and what you're about. And so if you can't put forth any effort to just have a static page that advertises for you, then we don't even need to pretend that this, you know there's anything that can happen after that. I remember seeing more than one man who was obviously wounded. In the oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, oh, yeah, the angry, and if you're one of those women who such and such and such and such is, yeah. yes, those people, yes, I forgot about them, yes. Yeah. And yeah. there's also the black men who refuse to date black women. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those people, I mean, they don't want you anyway, so don't even try. Yeah. A, ro a robe on the mirror, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing is, as we sort of wind down this topic, I just want to point out two things that the online dating industry is uh, estimated to be worth $2.3 billion by 2016, um, and that there are consulting companies that actually help you write your profile. So there, I mean, you know, if you're really serious about this and you're, you know, not the best writer, not the best picture taker, you know, there are options out there for you. I mean, I, if you pay me an hourly rate of $75, I will help you. <laughs> you know, so you're, will, you're gonna be hitch. You're gonna be hitch for. Yeah, I'm, hitch. I'm not gonna like. I can't make you get you into a relationship, but I can get you solid dates. Like and where you guys both have a great time. Now, if your personality is, I don't know, flat as a five day old Pepsi, <laughs> I can't help you with that. Um, did. but Mitch helped him out. He got him some swag. Who? Hitch did. Oh, well, yeah, but that's not real life. I mean, <laughs> um, and if you, if you don't like women, that, it, that's, I, nobody can help you with that. But, yeah, you don't have to put up a bad profile. You don't have to. 
put up pictures standing in front of your car. You don't have to. Oh, like right. we've got the technology where in front we've got of your motorcycle. Right. I feel like that's a commercial. You need to start. <laughs> you need to lead with that in your commercial. You don't have to put up a, a promo. The man on the moon shot. Let but, me help you. <laughs> Right, I mean, got yeah. shot where they're all having a toast somewhere out in the uh, in the restaurant. You're really popular. They always have that <laughs> shot too. So we have a couple more comments. That, a couple more comments that I didn't read. Um, Linda Brothers says twenty different avatar pictures of just your face, and your face only must mean you look like a sack of potatoes, have a club foot, or you have some other malfunction. I I, I might have to um, agree with that, or you don't have any friends who would take a picture of you. <laughs> you just set a timer on your picture and then go timer run. Timer picture. And yeah. Strangers in the street will take your picture for you. Right. That's true. That's true. Um. Uh. Uh. Da, 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 let's see. Uh, Jeffrey says he's 23. Um. He said we should make an episode with him. Um. He also said that's why he. Uh, he's way too nervous to date. He's not I feel sure. like Miss Smart can help you, Jeffrey. I feel like she can help you set up an online profile. So Local you people only, because I have to meet with you face to face and make sure I can work with you. <laughs> okay? I'm, not just, right there. I, I'm not just out here taking money just to be taking it. I want people to be successful. <laughs> you know, and I've tried this. Well, I'll, I won't even go into that. Um. So, and uh, it says Tinder mm. is, and this is from Black Rob, Tinder, Tinder is an app where you look at the profile photo, then swipe right if you like them, left if you don't. If they swipe right on you and you swipe right on them, then it, that's a lot of, then it's a match and y'all can start messaging each other. That, that seems sounds hard. simple. I mean, it sounds difficult in translating it, but it sounds simple to do, like swipe, swipe, bam. I, I guess, but no profile, just, it's just like you, you would do at the club, except you don't have to worry about the approach, right? Because you swipe, just swipe, bam. I think, you should, I think that should be a club approach. Swipe, swipe. Just <laughs> <laughs> be in the club like do do like whoop, and then if the person says whoop, then I know swipe to the right, swipe to the left. Nope. <laughs> so let's um let's uh transition a little bit from um online dating. Unless you guys have anything else to add to the cluster of things that we've discussed already. Nope. I'm going to go ahead and do our sound effects, though, so people who need to log off can know this is their cue to log off. So hold on. Okay. Spoiler alert! <laughs> so if you have not um, been paying attention, you've been under a rock or whatever, um, Orange is the New Black, Season 2 is out, and we're about to talk about the very first episode. So if you want to log off now, we have given you a warning. Spoiler alert! <laughs> Right. right. So, ladies, how did you feel about episode one? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait. Before we talk about the episode, can we discuss um, what is a good consensus about an appropriate amount of time when Netflix releases these shows in bulk the way that they do? How long should you wait before you start discussing it? Because it's been like a little Twitter thing you know, people doing spoilers, and they're like, people haven't had a chance to watch. Like, how long do you think is is an appropriate amount of time to to wait before discussing the show? Do y'all care? About, it's not about an appropriate time to discuss. It's about an appropriate time to not listen or read about it. Like, that, you know, that, it's different, though. I'm going to say, okay, because I didn't know. I didn't see this conversation, but I was talking about it today because I didn't know people, you know, were really talking about it that much. But the fact that the whole, because the whole season is out, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. so that's a different way of thinking about it. Like, it's one thing to be mad at people for spoiling something that's actually on and you, everyone in the world, in the country knows when it's on and, you know, you can just log off. But it's totally different when, you know, people still are used to watching things kind of a week at a time or on their own or whatever. And then, you know, everyone it doesn't have 13 hours to just kind of sit and watch a whole season right at one point like that's not a collective way so I can understand that there needs to be some kind of conversation about what is I think that's a good question what is an appropriate amount of time I mean I'm not going to try to venture an answer right now but I don't think it's an unreasonable question because that's just but not how we too, watch like, you know if somebody yells out oh my god Piper died on their Twitter account you know that person is an asshole 
You know what I'm saying? Like most people are not gonna do that, but they are gonna say, "Hey, I just hey, saw an idiot, and I want to talk about it." And if you see that, then you just like scroll past whatever they're talking, you know, or mute yeah. that person, unfollow, do whatever you need to do, um, you know. But I would not tweet about the show and tweet spoilers. But I, you know, I just feel like you know some people really wanted to talk about some things, and then. People were like, you're an asshole if you talk about it now. And I'm like, well, there are people who watched it. Can't they talk and you just mute or, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, they have a, I mean, they should start like a, a hashtag kind of orange is the new black, you know, binge exactly. or something like that, yeah. especially yeah. this early. I mean, it is yeah. early to have watched a whole season of anything. I'm so. not bending over backwards to be considerate of people who have the power to mute the shit out of me or unfollow me. But they I gotta mean, know. That's I mean, I think people can mute you, but that's why we have hashtag to say right. you might want to mute me or and mute this hashtag. Right. And that's yeah, but I think people I have hashtag, done that. That's why I hashtag my Daya is an idiot. I think I've uh uh tweeted that twice. Every time I see her on the screen, she's a damn idiot and I'm sick of her. Um uh, no spoiler, but I'm sick of her ass. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's get into episode one. So, uh, Buddha, you you side. <laughs> Wait, first of all, I know Miss Smart and I have watched more episodes than you have. Smart, what? Well, how many episodes did you get to? I finished it. Okay, because I, I just it and I was like this. Well, I did it on the um on the what do you call it on on the tablet. Just fast forwarded through some scenes. So I got the gist. I'll probably take my time and watch it later on, but I got the gist of what, what's going on. I'm on the you did the cliff notes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I cliff notes. She scams everything. She scams text messages. So you know she's going to scam the 13 episodes. But yeah, I got to the finale. I haven't watched the finale yet, but I already read what was going to happen, so I know what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, so anyway. But uh, Boodoo, how, how far did you, did you just do episode one? I just did episode one, so I can re remember what it said, what happened. <laughs> How'd you feel? <laughs> I felt like I was glad you let me know that the rest of the season doesn't look or work <laughs> like episode one because I, you know, I really didn't like Piper in season one, and I liked her even less in episode one of season two, like if that's possible. I even tweeted about the fact that is it possible to like someone any less or any more than I dislike someone any more than I do right now. I and mean, I just don't, she, the whole thing was her privilege and her asking questions and her just being generally irritating and being emotional. And then I'm just like, shut up. No one cares about you. Get off the screen. I yeah. feel like it's intentional almost. Like they well, want her to hate Piper. Like, that's what I said. They're kind of make. I did not tweet that to you or write that to you that they're purposely making her irritating or something like that. <laughs> Because, I mean, like, just, just the synopsis from the show, and, and for anybody, you know, this is not necessarily a spoiler, but for those of you who watched episode one and was like, oh, God, I got to go through 13 episodes of this shit, you don't. Um, you, oh know, it, you know, it is going to focus on the backstories of the people that we know and love and give us some more insight to new characters that we're going to fall in love with and stuff like that. It's not Piper Field, thank God. But, um... Uh, the synopsis is Piper's world is turned upside down when she's forced to confront the consequences of her actions and face new challenges. So they s start off by her being in the, the SEG after she beat up Pensatucky, and then they um, transport ho her onto Con Air because she's going to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Con Air. She's Young going ones to don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it is an airplane for convicts. Um, <laughs> and a movie, a co-ed airplane for convicts. <laughs> but um, cause she's supposed to be testifying against the African dude. I forget what his name was. Um, so you know, like you were saying, it was all about her privilege. Like it started out with her having to pee, and it was all about her having to pee. And I was just like, you're not the only one on the plane that's got to pee. You know, I mean, it was just because it was just, Piper hasn't accepted. She has no ability to read the signs, to read the world. It is just about her and her needs. She hasn't accepted that prison is not vacation. It is not Girl Scout camp. You don't get to do what you want to do, but just in this setting. You know, like, well, and the guard asked. I mean, if it opened up and he was like, do you have to go to the bathroom? Right. Asked her twice. Didn't just, didn't right. even stop at once. Asked her more than once. Right. And he said, well, 
I asked you, just remember. Because she doesn't have the sense to think. She she thinks there's always going to be an opportunity. There's, you know, someone's always going to ask because they're always supposed to acquiesce to her needs. They're supposed to help her. And unfortunately, oftentimes these motherfuckers do help her. Like, I don't understand why she hasn't been, like, dragged. Like, right. that fight with Pensatucky, that shit should have happened in week one. Somebody should have whipped their ass on GP. Like, my note for her was just Piper gone pipe. Like, that's all I, you know, because she's going to talk about her rights. And, you know, and I'm like, only privileged white people go into a, an aggressive situation talking about their rights when they're, you know, being transported on the con air. Like, I was just like, just shut up. And then, Where are we going? You have to tell me where we're going. I still have rights. I get to know where we're going. Does anybody know where we're going? I have to use the bathroom. I can't talk to you about this because I really have to use the bathroom right now. But do you know where we're going right now? <laughs> What was the whole first 20 minutes of the show? And then her meltdown. This is when I, I, my note that I took was Buddha was right. She's a bad actress or she's trolling us all because she gave us all this emotion. And, and I really, you know. I, didn't care, I didn't give a damn. Like she was crying like real, you know, white guilt tears. And I just did not care. Mm -hmm. um, they did have a parallel story though. They had her, her flashbacks to her childhood where we get to see that she was a responsible goody two shoes piper she started talking about um, when her friends were jumping off the back of the, the school bus when they were younger how she didn't take unnecessary risks because she learned that from her daddy and the bus driver called her daddy's girl and then she saw her dad cheating on you her call responsible. I call that bitch boring look I'm just saying you know she Basically, this whole risk-taking Piper thing, you know, they were trying to give us this, this really isn't Piper, this is Piper's background when she was, you know, not the Piper that she is today. So I don't, usually when I see the character's backgrounds, I'm sympathetic towards why they're there. Of course, in Piper's case, I, yeah, I was just like, okay, Piper, your dad cheated on your mom. That happens to more people than, <laughs> you know, and they don't go off the deep end. So anyway... Um, the other thing that I put on, I put, I, I can't remember some of these notes, but I put co-ed prison. I mm -hmm. put panty. Wait, that's right. I mean, I really, I, I, I was kind of outdone by that. Yeah, it was like, dude, oh, was in prison. The detention center, right? It was yeah, the Chicago exactly. detention center. I was still shocked. I mean, she got enough time to go have a conversation with a guy who was harassing her on the plane and give him her draws so he could sniff them for a favor. Yeah, I put panty sniffing. I you know, in demand. <laughs> Four oh, days old panty sniffing. Then I put yay Alex because we get to see Alex. I put Huck face lick. Who licked her face? Um, somebody in that uh, that was oh, it the, the horoscope chick, the horoscope, the astrologer yeah. lady. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I put Huck face lick, and then I put roaches. I can't, y'all. Y'all know I have a phobia of cockroaches. So for most of this episode, when they had the stuff with the roaches, I couldn't. I couldn't. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. It was. You know, they took it. They took it far. Um, and then I put convo with grandma hypocrite because um, she called her dad a hypocrite, and her grandmother was basically like, "This is the difference between honesty versus discretion." Mm -hmm. But she chose to tell her mom about you know her dad's affair. Hmm. Um, and then Alex's betrayal, because basically Alex, when they got to court, Alex had convinced her to say, the, oh, the guy's name was Kubra Balik. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. But she convinced him, or convinced Piper, to say that she had never met him. So what? she said it, and then Alex flipped and said that she, you know, they did meet. So it kind of messed up their plan or, you know, whatever. So yeah. Alex got out. You can't well, to be fair, she at least said she didn't recall, so she didn't go straight to no. She just said, I don't remember. Yeah. I think Alex was, I, I think Alex, uh, you know, you can't trust your, your fellow criminals. You just can't. <laughs> I mean, well, and Alex, we already know she's a fluent liar. We saw in season one that she maintained the fact that she did not rat P Piper out when, in fact, she did oh, rat yeah. Piper out, and That's she true. has never admitted it to this day. Yeah. And so Alex, Alex ultimately will be out for self. Um, mm -hmm. So we know what's going to happen for the rest of the season, but Buddha, do you have any predictions? Nope. I predict <laughs> that I, I will be... Still tired of Piper, and I'll be. I predict that I would like almost everyone else who appears on the screen whose name is not Piper. 
<laughs> and that is an absolutely accurate prediction that you will like everybody else <laughs> who is on yeah. screen yeah. except for Piper. But I will say the saving grace, though, is because, you know, when I was watching episode two, I was like, where's Piper? Thank God. Oh, God. You know, and I kept, like, cringing, waiting for her to show up. And I was like, whew. So there won't be Piper Field episodes. So we can, you know, rest rest on that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that um, whether or not you like Piper is going to be my litmus test for people because I'm finding that capable women, um, no matter the age or race, don't like her. Whiny, mm -hmm. boring bitches love her because they identify with her. Well, mm -hmm. hell, even when, as you watch more episodes, you realize people say that about her too. They're, they're, you know, they call her on her shit. Like she's not, and I know like in episode, I mean, in season one and even in this one, she gets away with more stuff than people, you know, regular people can, mm -hmm. but there are some lines that say exactly what you're thinking in that moment. And I mm -hmm. like that Genji put those things in there, you know, cause that lets us know that she doesn't really think Piper is a heroine. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. Right. I, I do want to just talk, go back a little bit to the Twitter question. Um, hmm. Leonard Brothers had a couple comments on that. Um, I, I don't watch Orange is the New well, I don't watch Orange is the New Black, but when it comes to conversations about seasons being dropped in bulk, I'd say maybe a couple of weeks, but at mm -hmm. the same time, people move at their own pace. You just have to be careful while online if you don't really want to know. Then he also said, I also agree with Smart about not wanting to bend over backwards to protect the virgin eyes and ears of people who haven't gotten around to watching a show. You don't have to get on the net. It's a choice. <laughs> if I choose to talk about the show, oh well. And then Black Rob says, I think it's about courtesy. Um, use the hashtag so people can mute it, right? Mute a person if, they li if they're live tweeting it, etc. But the whole world shouldn't have to stop just because you're slacking on watching a, a show. Right, Piper? We're not going to stop. Everybody's not going to stop. So <laughs> right. Because <we're> <laughs> <stopping. laughs> you in jail, so we can't talk about it. When people kept going on and on about these tirades, I was thinking, shut up, Piper. Like, that's that's all I kept thinking. I wanted to tweet back, shut up, Piper, but I figured people would get all upset in their feelings. So. Yeah, yeah. I miss Twitter. I haven't been able to be, be on, so I haven't seen any of these conversations, none of the complaints, nothing. Ooh. Well, so we need to tell everybody that we're going to try to make this into a, a weekly segment until we're done. We're going to... um watch like I think what is it we didn't I don't know if we decided three or four episodes and then talk about it as a segment so you you know this in advance mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can either catch up <laughs> um, you know and we'll also definitely tell you guys spoiler alert when we're transitioning into the the Orange is the New Black segment. And one more um, comment from Leonard Brothers I saved this till the end he said it a lot earlier um, but this is a very valid question uh, what about the elephants are there going to be any elephants involved if not if, if if not, I mean, he's got $5 on the elephants for Lady Buddha's wedding, so I don't know if he's talking. And maybe we could do mammoths. I feel like elephants would be too much if we have the giraffes, because remember, we talked about giraffe booty. and the elephants got all the ass. Giraffe, so we don't want to add elephant, elephant booty. Elephants got all the ass. I'm just saying, <laughs> we might, especially since the giraffes are going to be twerking, there's going to be an odor issue already. I can't so. see y'all <laughs> at all. So I feel like we need to stick with the giraffes. <laughs> okay, well you heard it here first. She's she's uh you know slapping down the giraffes. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> try to get some some money some some uh work for the twerk team. She got the giraffes twerking. Them doing double duty. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. no, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, ladies, um, where can the people find y'all? Um, <laughs> the A, the A. um well you know I want to give a shout out because oh. the Tonys were uh, on Sunday yes and even though my girl Anika didn't win in her category her castmate did for a raisin in the sun so I want to give a shout out to them and to Kenny Leon who uh, won for direction but I really want to give a shout out or cheers to Audra McDonald for making Tony history. She's the first person to win six Tonys. Mm -hmm. She also has two Grammys. And um, she was really emotional and choked up and had a really sweet speech. And anyway, just cheers to her. 
But you can find me. Um, I haven't been tweeting as much lately, so I've been losing followers. So y'all cut that out. Come back. <laughs> um, I'm at uh, N D Collier, C O L L I E R, and you can also find me on my blog, which I haven't been blogging much lately. But I'm at www.cocostudio.com, C O C O Studio Singular, cocostudio.com. All right. And my twit. Oh, first my cheers. Um, I just wanted to give uh, cheers to Black Rob for blessing us with the website so that I could get my oh. wedding coordinating planning on. He's so <laughs> this is never gonna end. Let's no, hurry up. My cheers really. Ooh. They really are reserved for him yeah. because it's not just about you, Buddha. It's that the entire website was greatness. Like their pictures, there's film and video. So I really do want to give my cheers to Black Rob for bringing that to, to my attention. That made my day. Um, and then you can find me on Twitter at S-O-J-O-X-O-X-O. -O -O. That's Sojo X-O-X-O. -O. And my website is www.feminine.com. That's F-E-M-I-N-Y-I-N.com. Okay. Um, I would like to give um, my cheers to the real Alex Voss for getting this bitch Piper locked up. <laughs> um, wow. I'm okay with it happening because sometimes, you know, you need, you know, the universe needs to put you in a corner. <laughs> um, She's supposed to have a website too. Who the else? Real, the real chick. Real yeah. One, yeah. <laughs> and you know, she's done like her. We I think we talked about this in um. The other, the reviews for last season that she's done, like, you know, her education and stuff. I do applaud her for moving forward with her life. Um, I don't have anybody else specifically, a specific name to give cheers to, but in general, I like to give a cheers to the people who take the time to Google before they say stuff like, well, when you get out of jail, you should just get a job. You should just go to school. Um, because I think if people did the research, they would find that it's not necessarily that easy to get a job, to go to school, and to do all these things that um, people think you're, you should just walk out of jail and be able to do after um, you serve your sentence. Um, I can be reached at think underscore p underscore smart, and that's the Twitter, and our, did we give our Twitter handle for the show? Anyway, mm. the Twitter handle for the show is at whiskey wine moon. Feel free to chat us up there if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or criticisms. We may not respond, but you know, if you want to get them off your chest, feel free to do it there. <laughs> uh, ladies, any closing? Any well, other <laughs> Tell them about iTunes Podomatic. Oh, yes, yes. So um, leave us five star reviews on all of the devices on Podomatic. On um, well, can you do five stars on? I don't know. On Stitcher and iTunes, and leave reviews and. Feel free to share this with all of your friends, family, loved ones, your coworkers. As I've stated many times, I know you aren't doing anything for at least 15 minutes of each hour at work. So, you know, feel free to share this with your uh, smarter, civilized coworkers. We, we'd be happy to have them um, in our little family of sippers. I no, have us your online dating tips and stories. Oh, yes. Send Do those the feedback at whiskeywineandmoonshine.com. That'll be fun. <laughs> we like to hear that. We'd also like to, you know, if you have, I think I asked the ladies about, you know, uh, warning signs or whatever, yellow flags, red flags or whatever. Uh, we like we like to get, get those out there because because we're about helping the people. Us and Wu Tang, we love well, people. Tell us your success stories, and maybe one day I'll tell y'all about how I met Blue. Right. Again, <laughs> no, I haven't really. No one. I haven't really uh, talked I have about one it video here. tape like y'all crossing paths. You don't have it. I've never seen it. But the, the whiskey <laughs> wine and moonshine. No, <laughs> don't don't make me. The whiskey don't wine and moonshine me. nation has no clue about don't the story. Don't make That's all. me. <laughs> and I, so maybe one day, you know, we'll talk about I that. I just thought that was so beautiful. <laughs> You know that was your future, Blue. Okay, all right. We're gonna, we gonna go ahead. On and that end. note, <laughs> talking real crazy now. Say no. goodbye. Mm -hmm. Cheers to the people. Cheers. Cheers. Empty Bye. glass. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. Cheers.